My brother Cliff is the bodyguard for Jared uh, Padalecki and Jensen Ackles on the show Supernatural. And he has been going to conventions for years and meeting fans. This show is in its 11th season. And I guess somewhere around season eight, my brother said to me, you know, these conventions are amazing. You should meet these fans. Some crazy stuff happens. And he would call and tell me about it. And he'd ask me to come down to the convention and see it. And uh, I just never did. I was always busy doing my own stuff. And uh, he said, well, we got to make this into a movie. And I said, well, I don't, I don't know. You know, uh, I'm busy, you know. And I said, why don't you shoot it? I told him to get some cameras, which he borrowed off the show, Supernatural. And he went and he goes on this little tour during the hiatus when the show's not shooting. And he visits the fans all over the United States. He always has a hot car, like a racing car, like a Mustang. He's got this Mustang GTA right now. He drives across the United States, stops in at these little towns in like Kentucky and, and uh, Louisiana. And I'm not kidding. He visits, you know, dozens of people during the hiatus. And he would always tell me about meeting these people and their crazy stories and stuff and really amazing stuff that happened. And I told him to take these cameras and he did. And he came back with a bunch of footage, but it was, it was, it was not usable. It was not very good. He just doesn't know how to work a camera <laughs> for whatever reason. So he said to me, because he's always, all our lives he's got me involved in things that I have always said, he keeps me alive. Because he'll call me up and say, hey, we're going to learn how to race rally cars. I'm the driver, you're the navigator, so I've signed you up for navigator school. He does stuff like that. So he says, you got to come down and shoot this stuff. So I, I put my baseball hat on backwards because that's what, that's what photographers do, right? You put your baseball yeah, hat on oh backwards. Yeah. Okay, so I did that and I bought a camera from my daughter and I bought a little cheap microphone and put it on the top of the camera. It was a little Canon T5i and I went down to the convention in Vancouver. Uh, and I saw some stuff going on. I saw all these people, like 3,000, mostly women. And then I started watching a little more closely and listening to the people talk. And I went into the photo op where the people getting their photo ops and they're coming out and they're crying their eyes out. And I said, hey, you know, what, what's happening there? And they talked to me with an accent. And I'd say, where are you from? Well, I'm from Germany. I'm from Brazil. I'm from Tokyo, Japan. What? So now I was really interested. These people really traveled. They were very passionate about it. That was enough of a story to, to get me interested. Obviously, I found out all sorts of other stuff because I ended up shooting fans at conventions all over North America. And then the, the, the two lead actors said, we'll be involved, we'll contribute. So I interviewed them and that changed everything because all the other actors said, we want to be in it. So I went to Los Angeles, and I went to Pasadena, and I went to Houston, Texas, I went to Jacksonville, Florida, and I interviewed as many actors as I could. I think I interviewed somewhere around 30, 32 of the top cast. Wow. Yep, Jared Padalecki, Jensen Ackles, Misha Collins, uh, um, uh, Mark Shepard, Richard Spate Jr., uh, uh, Rob Benedict, who has a band called Loud and Swain. He, if you heard the music, Loud and Swain provides yeah. the music for the for the movie. They gave us all the, the their music. He said, so "Sure." Is, so is this your full time job? No, I have a full time <laughs> job. Oh my god! I'm an executive in a rental company. Oh my. So. so then, what inspired? I mean, yeah. other than all the footage that yeah. you have and your brother in, uh, encouraging you to do this, what inspired you to finally just sit down and actually say, "Okay, you know what? We're going to do this. We're going to break this up into episodes." Um, the reason it became a web series was I was trying to figure out how to get this film that I'd been shooting into a film. I had like 55 hours of video and I did not know what to do with it. By then there was still tough stuff I had to shoot. There were still actors who wanted to be involved. So I still had more to shoot. But I met Jason Fisher. Jason Fisher of Frostbite Pictures because he's the production coordinator on Supernatural. So I was on Supernatural talking to my brother and I do business with them too. And Jason was there and he said, well, you know, we got this web fest thing. So I came down and I met Suzette and I watched the web fest and I sat here with my buddies, Brenton Spencer and Simon Abbott, a couple of producers, producer director guys uh, from way back. I mean, I've known them since we were doing 21 Jump Street. And we sat- That, that, that dates you, Mitch, right that there. That dates me that, seriously. That, that, that dates you, 21 dates Jump Street. Oh, yes, yeah. <laughs> but you know what's really amazing is it dates Steve Basic. And if you go look at him, we aged and he didn't. So <laughs> what the hell's up with that? But anyway, so I sat here and I went to all the seminars and I listened to Jeff Young and I listened to a bunch of people talk and I talked to Jason and he said, why don't you make it into a web series? Okay, so we took all the footage we had and I wrote little synopses. I didn't write full scripts, but I wrote like a one pager for each and we started breaking up the stuff that we had into these nine themes and that evolved into the series. And then I ordered the series in a kind of an arc so that it would have a peak and then a conclusion. That's the movie. 
then we took that and made it into the feature film, a 108 minute movie. Uh, you make it sound so easy, but no, what? It's not easy. Uh, <laughs> it's not uh, easy. But what would you do differently uh, then with what you know now? Um, I would be more careful about what I shot because I, I know that it's important to capture good sound. There's a lot of stuff I learned about, uh, well, actually I learned about photography and sound capture that I didn't know. But really, I couldn't have changed that because I had to learn that stuff myself. There's no way I was gonna get anybody to do it for me. My, I, I budgeted, I, I didn't write a budget. I paid for all of this with my own MasterCard and I would fly, it cost about five grand to go shoot somewhere else. I'd borrow, in the early days, I'd borrow a camera, sometimes I'd hire a camera guy. But I'd fly somewhere, interview people, come home, pay off my MasterCard, build it back up again, then I'd go back and shoot some more people. So I, I didn't have the opportunity to say, okay, hire professional people to do this. I had to learn it. So there's no doing that over again. However, if I were going to shoot like another series and do that, I would put probably, I would get that 100 grand, 150 grand together and I would, uh, I would hire professional people. I'd be more careful about where we went. I'd be a little bit more organized and I wouldn't waste as much money. I wouldn't shoot as much footage that would never get used. So what's the next step for you? Uh, now that you've created these episodes, where yeah. are you gonna go from there? Well, the episodes, we've already got interested buyers for the episodes. It's just a question of looking at what tier we actually want to sell to. Because we can put it on the air right now in several countries around the world, several regions around the world. People are offering us money for it. But obviously we want to sell it to the largest market. It's already available Vimeo On Demand. We offer it ourselves on the website. So the web series is already a success. It financed the completion of the movie. We have about fifty or $60,000 worth of post-production to do on the film. I've got about thirty grand. So we're going to finish the film in the next 30 days or so. And then we'll, uh, then Frostbite is going to market the film. And it'll end, up, it'll end up somewhere. We've already got interested people in the film too and they haven't even seen it. So it'll end up somewhere. It's just a question of where it ends up in that tier. And because so many new channels, so many new, new media are opening up, so many delivery channels, the opportunities are greater than they were even six months ago. You know, like Lionsgate TV, yeah. they opened a digital channel just last week and they, they took some product off some friends of ours, Richard Spate Jr. and, and Rob uh, Benedict made this thing called Kings of Con. Well, Lionsgate Digital just took that and, you know, they're interested in our product. That's amazing. I mean, times are definitely changing, right? Yeah, rapidly. Yeah. And so uh, the WebFest, this is your second year attending the WebFest. Yep. How helpful uh, has that been for you? And what's the one thing that you enjoy about the WebFest? If I hadn't known what a WebFest was and understood web series and Jason Fisher really just said, come down, come and take a look. If I didn't know what that was, we never would have made the series and we'd probably still be floundering to make the feature Yay! film. Thank you for so WebFest. That's awesome. It's, it's absolutely critical. What I will tell people who are asking what it's like, and Ivan kind of touched on it. He said that uh, it's indie film. To me... It's just like film festivals were 15 to 20 years ago. Mm. This is a film festival. That's what it is. These are your independent and emerging filmmakers. Independent film has taken on, it's not, independent films aren't independent films anymore. Independent films can be $2 million or $20 million. For me, an independent film is like guys like me, the guy behind that camera, the guy behind that camera, getting a few friends together, getting a solid story and not worrying so much about post-production and video capture and w just doing the best you can with the equipment you've got. But understanding that the story is key and making that. And if it doesn't sell, who gives a shit? Yeah. Make another one, right? I love this guy, I love this guy. Thank you so much, Mitch. And it's been so inspirational just watching those episodes. It's been so incredible Great. how a TV cool. show can inspire so many people globally, really. Yes, it's a global and, impact. And yeah. uh, it's just like one water drop and it's just a ripple effect. It's amazing. Yeah. So thank you for sharing one, that with us. One more thing I want to say. Yeah. It's never too late. Yes, most of the independent people who are coming out here are young people and God bless them all. I'm 58 years old. God bless you, Mitch. God bless Ray power. you. Ray power. <laughs>